Hey, good morning guys, Farmer here, and the Farmer's Son. We just had a new calf here, so we're going to head out here and try to tag it. Without getting killed. Because if you do, we're not Hey, how's it going? We're just headed out here to find a new baby calf and tag it. I got the farmer's son here. He's going to hold the camera so you can see me tag it. So I hope everybody's having a great day so far. Up here I can see it. It was a first time heifer calf. So she delivered on her own. It looked like a pretty big calf when I seen it this morning. Oh, I see it. She does a pretty good job hiding it. Hello guys, we're out here gonna tag a calf. Uh, the pasture is six acres. Looks like he's laying down with another calf. And you see it's pretty hard to tag them when they're... Oh, I found it. We're gonna go over here. She did a, she did a good job hiding it. Usually if you come up behind them, hey Mass 1105, usually when you come up behind uh, the calf, they'll just pretend you're not there. So I'm going to let the farmer's son hold it here. Now we got to be quiet here so don't jump up. So guys, hang on. You got to walk quiet. Make your feet up. Quieter. I don't even know what it is yet, so we'll let you know here in a minute. Here, hold the camera. Don't move it. Watch where you're looking at. Here was a baby calf. Ah! And it's a bull calf. And it's a bull calf. So there we got him tagged. We'll let him rest here. It's a nice little bull calf that was born this morning. Now I didn't have 217 so I put 216 on there. Um, so the date, the last number is the date it was born so I'm off one day but it's okay. We're gonna keep moving here. Can I have a, tell him where we're going next? Yeah the tag woke him up and luckily his mom didn't hear because she'd become a flying across the top there. We'll walk out this way. I think I latched the gate up here. Sorry, I'm gonna. He went right back to sleep. So a little bull calf this morning. That was nice. So we have two bulls and uh, six heifers so far. Dad, can you see it? We're, we're heading, we're heading back. Yeah. Those calves are not gonna stick around. They said they're nuts with that. So we had rain this morning. We did mow all the grass hay down here on the farm. Yeah, we're getting close to being out of syrup again, Tim. I'll have to order some from you here. Especially getting close here to the holidays again. End of the year, it's hard to find syrup. So. 
So what we were up to today so far was just go out and tag this calf. I want to go out and show you the hay we got knocked down. We got five five fields knocked down right now. So we're gonna try to make decent hay. But uh, we're in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. And we were just route tagging a new calf here. I like to keep them, keep track of them. So his mom was uh, 35, and he'll be 216. I know today's 217, but like I said earlier, I didn't have a tag with 17 on it. So one day doesn't really bother me. Well, welcome to the channel there. Farmer, I think it's McLean, 72. I might not have said it right. It's awful bright out here. We got some cattle down here eating. And then the barn's packed full. We put down corn silage. Now the topic was uh, why would anybody or is it profitable raising bottle calves? And a lot of you guys have been subscribers for a while. You know that we do raise a lot of bottle calves. And uh, Last year we put it quite a few through. I'm not going to say exact number, but it was a lot. And uh, we started here again this year. Yeah, it's hot here too. I'm breaking a sweat. So we're going to go down here and check the hay. We mowed that yesterday. We uh, had the neighbor come in and mow it for me because I was doing tobacco. And... Uh, he has a uh, New Holland, I think it's the New Holland 200 or uh, Speed Road 200. Come on, buddy. And I'll show you what kind of job it did, and we'll get down here. I thought it'd be a nice evening to do a live stream. I know some of you guys are all busy, but... Did you guys have a rain in central uh, uh, this morning? No, the electricity is not fixed yet. So everything's on temporary. Uh, the barn, we're having problems with the barn yet and the house. And I'm hoping the insurance company for the trash company is going to pay for all the damages because they're just getting out of hand. And we're going to start chopping corn here again, hopefully by the end of the week here. Seventy in Nebraska. Yeah, it feels like it's a hundred here tonight. Um, it's high in humidity, I guess. I'm trying not to jump the camera around too much. The family's all out here playing. They're having fun. We're going to go over here and look at this hay ground here quick. Give that to mommy there. Then she can... Don't want to lose it. We're really going through the corn silage here. Uh, I know some of you guys like to see feed more grain, but I'm telling you what, the gain on these calves is amazing. I should go over and show you them. Maybe later, but I'm on a mission right now. Let's check the tobacco barn out quick. So, yeah, is raising bottle calves profitable? Yes and no. Uh, we've been doing it here now for over a year, year and a half, here on this farm. And um, when you grow all your own crops and stuff like that, it makes a difference. Uh, and it depends what you're feeding them. With uh, corn being on a lower price right now, 
we did change our milk replacer. Some of you guys seen this picture already, maybe on Instagram. Uh, the Farming Life 1 is on Instagram now, so if you guys follow any Instagram, you can go check that out. So it's just, it's farming, uh, the farming life one on Instagram. So this crop above us here is from last year. And, um, we just ran out of time and we actually will make out really well with it this year. Cause it'll give us a head start for stripping and, uh, bring cash flow in a little quicker. And this is this year's crop, but it's really it's really drying down really nice back in here so this goes all the way up to the peak of the barn here and uh, over on the other side we have the other bait about full too so all right back to the bottle caps yeah so if you don't put your time and stuff and figure all your time in um, I'm already a full-time farmer, so I'm here on the farm all the time. So I just figure it as just an extra job. It keeps me busy and uh, uh, something to do. So we don't have TV here on the farm. Here's our new uh, electric panel, but it's this temporary one here. You can see this wire come down here. This is not proper. This is all just temporary fix. No, we got to do the question came in. Have you got all the tobacco in? Uh, no, we're still working on the PA41. Working on the other tobacco barn. So, I did get the wagons unloaded. There's some wagons over there. We're walking down here to one of the hay fields. There's three on the side of the road over here, and then we have two down another farm here. Or three, yeah, three down here. And it's been really hard making uh, any kind of hay this year. But it's nice about beef cattle, you don't need to make perfect hay. They'll eat it. But this is nice stuff down in here. It's gonna be a heavy. It's a heavy cut here. This will be uh, this will be number three, third cutting here. And there's some fox tail in it and stuff, but you can see the wind rose. And there's green underneath there. Should be tetted out here, but we don't do too much on Sundays. So there's two fields right here. This one here along the road, and then the back one is a pretty good sized one. And then the one down here, down on the other side of the hill here, there's another little field. But it is drying. Ground's awful wet down in here. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. We're going to try to make some dry hay here. It's just going to be cattle hay. And uh, it did get some rain on it. Yeah, the ground's terrible wet. The ground never never had any time to dry out this year. It's muddy. That's gonna hold moisture. And you know, this is September the 17th today here. So you can see the tracks on that uh, wind rower. But, yeah. Yeah, so we had a new Holland come in, and the neighbor, he mowed it for us. And uh, I just didn't have time to mow it ourselves. And... So we'll go up here to the bottle calves again. How you doing, PA Farms? Well, they're calling for rain, and was, uh, when every, uh, tomorrow they're calling for rain again here. Just a quick shower. Uh, 
I had a request here, let's see, uh, one of our viewers about this baler in here, and I should do, I need to make a video on that. He wanted to know how we mounted that motor and stuff on that. Maybe some of you guys didn't see this, but. This is a small baler we use here on the farm. It has its own power unit on it. Some guys use a Briggs and, uh, Briggs and Stratton or a Wisconsin motor. But you can see you have to weld a bracket handle on the side here. This is all the, this is all the, uh, not the original, this is a frame that's mounted on the baler. And uh, I'll pull it out here and do a video on that someday. But it's one thing we like, it's a New Holland, I think it's a 311 baler. So, anyway, so we uh, started another batch of bottle calves here. We did not start them in the greenhouse or a hoop house or calf barn or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this time we started them down uh. here. Turn the light on. And so we're raising them in a pen here, and they're doing really well. Um, yeah, a lot of guys run the, uh, the question was, he, uh, someone said, Tim said they had a Wisconsin motor on uh, their uh, baler. That was a popular motor back then to put on a baler, and... Uh, but uh, the concept for us of having a motor on it is so we can rebale big bales into small bales uh, for people that need them, especially straw. Uh, that does really well for people that come in for one bale for the holidays or whatever they want. But so yeah, we're back here at these bottle calves. Uh, none of these calves had a shot. They're gaining weight. They're eating grain. We do feed a 22% starter. It's uh, about 20 bucks a bag, roughly. And the milk replacer is right around 62, I think, a bag this time. It's a little cheaper. We changed our brand. And uh, there's no coughing in here. They're just happy. Hey, how's it going, Cornwall? So we we're going to plan on doing another uh, 60 of these here once it cools down, starting October. And um, pretty much I'm going to be one feeding them, uh, try to, the wife helps out and the kids really help out. When uh, the boys are getting old enough here, Justin will, he'll help me out in the morning. But yeah. So we got two batches here going. And uh, you can see they're eating grain really well. I think it's bottle time already. So there's 12 calves down here, and uh, I like the way we're doing it here. It's just a little hard for feeding. What I'll do is chain them, like four of them, and then that, that doesn't make it a mess in here, and then we'll on-chain them again when we're done feeding. Uh, here's the, it's a super start, 22%. Uh, they really like it. It has a nice uh, texture to it. So... And again, that's about 20 bucks a bag, roughly. Well, we can go up this way here once. I'm surprised I didn't lose service. Is it still coming in clear, guys? I got some calves over here. Hey, thanks, Tim. Down here is all my, this the bottom half here is, plus the ones on the pastures, the cows are due yet. Um, we do raise some Holstein heifers, which they go back to a dairy. They, I own them, and uh, we'll lease them to them, and uh, there's six of these Holstein heifers in here. They'll be due here, I think, end of October. And these are all my feeder calves here. 
all Holstein. No, these are uh, Angus with a few uh, Holstein mix in there, but mostly all Angus. And uh, here's another heifer here, number 138. She's a young heifer. She'll be uh, going back to a dairy eventually. So. Yeah, so anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you a couple of shots in here, some of the calves. We do have a couple bowls in here, five bowls. Uh, eight. We had eight, uh, eight uh, calves so far. No, sorry, nine. Nine, uh, nine calves. So, the MX is running really good. Um, I had to move it the other day and I stuck it up in the barn here. And, uh, I haven't, I haven't ran in here for a little bit because uh, the weather's just been so rainy. And uh, so I had a jump to start it, but it, I hooked the truck to it and it jumped right off. No, the, I own the cattle and the Holstein uh, heifers. And what I do is when I say lease them back, I own them. They have the option to buy them, but they have to rebreed them, and I get the calves out of them. I get every calf, and it has to be bred back to, uh, they have to be AI'd uh, to a pretty good uh, bull, so I get a nice, a, another heifer calf, or, so. Here's this corn silage we're feeding. We're feeding about 6,000 pounds. Yeah, we're going to chop more corn here uh, probably within a week. I was checking it here. The milk line's down about a quarter. The plant is awful green yet, so we can... We just haven't had the heat. So, I'm just walking around here and... Burning some calories, I guess. We should um, between the uh, MX and the two and the John Deere, we should do a pull off someday and see which one was going to get pulled backwards. Well, uh, what's the question there, Tim, about the heifers again? Yeah, the Hatfer Holsteins, I buy them in, and then uh, we'll raise them, I'll breed them, and then when they're ready to freshen, they'll go back over to the dairy, and uh, someday I'll take a film of that, or a video of that, and uh, I own them until they, A, pay them off, or if I decide to pull them out and sell them at a dairy sale, but our goal was to have 50 of them, and then uh, we'd have a nice set of... Uh, uh, dairy cattle a nice 50 herd is a nice number so and some of you guys seen a video we did some chopping hay uh, alfalfa last uh, week and uh, this thing did really well it needs a little work here and there but it was nice alfalfa So, yeah, so this week we'll be finishing up the tobacco, making hay. Probably do a couple of custom jobs here, baling, if we don't get rain. 
Uh, everything's been working really good on the baler. MX has been working good, so. Alright guys, well we'll, and we got to plant wheat here. I will we'll try to plant that in the first wheat, uh, week of October for us. You don't want to put it in too early. It gets too tall. Oh, uh, John Deere is the favorite brand. I guess you can't tell that. <laughs> There's enough of them around here sitting somewhere. So... But the MX-255, is uh, it's been a good trad drive. You know, if I would find another one like it, I'd probably buy it. They're a good workhorse. And then, uh... You know what I'm doing now? Mom, you know what I'm doing? Um... I, I do demo some equipment, but... It's like, um, we get, uh, we get a lot of people, you know, like, start asking, oh, why'd you buy that, or what are you doing that for, or, and it gets kind of old. This is our next, uh, the next thing I'm looking to get here. This is the 20, uh, the 2018 uh, big square baler here. A lot of stuff here. I'm going over here. But does anybody want to guess what that thing cost? So. I know it's. Uh, when you put yourself out here on YouTube. You get a lot of criticism. And. Um. You better keep putting that price up there a little bit. <laughs> Brand new 2018 Big Baylor. I can show you what the list price is. But yeah. Yeah, there you go. Now you're getting it. It's 165. 163, 165. And um, now we're getting a little high here. I'll have to... Sorry for the dinging here. This is the package deal here, 163825 uh, But yeah, this uh, equipment is a lot of money to purchase. I mean, it takes a lot of money to make this stuff work, but... Um, you can't grow as a farmer either if you don't continue to have an open mind and uh, purchasing equipment to keep keep ahead of the trends and stuff like that. Um, if that makes sense. The only tip I can give you for farming question was, do you have any tips for farming? You got to have it in your heart. Uh, um, it's one of those things you're gonna you're gonna wake up one morning and say you wish you'd never done it maybe but if it's in your heart it usually you have the ambition to keep going um, a lot of you know I didn't come from a farm background nor my wife did so and it's one of those things that I was out driving truck and stuff like that and we started having kids and I just thought it'd be a shame to raise kids being out in the road I do enjoy driving truck I ran oversized all over the countryside, all of the country, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, farming's in your heart, and you're willing to take the stress. So yeah, the John Deere will have a crop cutter. Well, we started out with tobacco, and uh, tobacco is a hard labor crop, but we had two good years. And the price of tobacco was a uh, really high, and uh, that's how a lot of us, you know, came about uh, the tobacco money. And it's a hard labor. I mean, um, so it's just one of those things you uh, you take the good and the bad. And but uh, tobacco has been uh, very good for us for a cash crop, 
and uh, when the price of grain are down the tobacco stays pretty uniform and uh, if you have a good quality crop you'll make out well but I wouldn't recommend going out and growing tobacco for some guys um, I have a lot of money invested in uh, the wagons and the planter and the tractors and and uh, sprayer and stuff like that but that's all paid for by tobacco that uh, little 5075 M and the loader tra there's a loader that goes on that tractor uh, that was all bought by tobacco money and uh, so yeah I think you can grow uh, tobacco in Canada I think there is some tobacco growing in Canada maybe you can just research that for me um, it's a shorter season crop so It's a shorter season crop, so some guys, I know it's grown in Wisconsin, uh, some in Ohio. Um, there's tobacco even grown farther north of me, up towards New York State. But uh, this area seems like a perfect climate for tobacco. Uh, but you have all your risk with your hail storms and stuff like that. But... Tobacco was just a, you know, I enjoy growing it. It was just a, for me, it was just to keep my dreams alive and to be able to have the cash flow. And I, my goal was to raise tobacco for a period of time to pay for the equipment and then, uh, then maybe downsize on the tobacco or wait till the boys get a little older, but, and uh, do more custom work. Uh, the one, uh, my oldest boy, he wants to get a self propelled, uh, Harvester and stuff like that will be coming down the road here. Um, they want uh, grain carts and another combine, and so dad has to keep working hard here, and uh, so I can let those guys uh, live their dreams in the farming and stuff. Yeah, raising cattle, it's been uh, you have your up and downs. Whenever you raise anything, it's alive you're always going to have uh, death and uh, you always have to have a backup plan but we've been very fortunate here on the farm to not lose too many uh, the bottle calves we, we the bottle calves are uh, been very good for us here the way we raise them and uh, I don't have all the answers for that but We've been just uh, trying to buy as little as feed as possible and raise all our own feed here on the farm. Well, I hope that works out for you there. Uh, you got to do dairy there, or are you gonna, what are you going to raise on your farm there in Canada? But. Well, guys, I just wanted to do a short video here and. Uh, I know uh, some of you guys are going to get into bottle calves here and and uh, up there behind those ag bags is the hoop house calf barn and we're going to plan to fill that up here again in starting October the 20th so hey thanks for sticking around Tim you have a good evening too and uh, so hey we'll talk to you later Christopher So, yeah, <laughs> keep rolling. Yeah, I'm going to keep rolling all right. Uh, keep up with, uh, yeah, the Angus life, yeah, that's nice. We'll see you later. Thanks for stopping around. The Angus uh, business has uh, been pretty good. I wanted to get into the breeding side of it. Cash flow, yeah. There's um, you got you got to be very diverse here on the farming. We uh, with the custom work, you know, when it's rainy, you don't have bailing money, so it's nice to have the cattle. If the cattle up, you could sell a couple head to to uh, float your payments. Um, tobacco is going to be going here to sale here in uh, starting November, so we'll have cash sales from the tobacco. So. 
you always got to keep your options open on a farm and uh, and not just just stick with one thing because on on a down year like this with corn prices and everything else you want to want to have everything in uh, all your ducks in a row so all right guys I appreciate y'all coming over and stopping saying hi and uh, keep uh, checking out for new videos coming out here next week and uh, see what kind of a challenges we have here on the farm and we'll keep you updated as much as we can um i would love to raise just dairy heifers but uh they're very expensive even at the sale barn i mean you buying quality heifers in you're looking at 200 to 500 if they're registered with papers and stuff like that and that's the way i would go to have a nice bloodline on the dairy side but yeah that's why we raised just a couple a year. Uh, I figure we'll get there eventually. But right now, um, Holstein bottle calves is the way to go for us. And just put a couple heifers through at a time. And eventually I'll have 50 head. And then I'll get calves for my dairy side. And then if dairy goes high, I'll sell the whole herd at one time. So, yeah, we'll pray for Texas here. So... You guys have a good uh, evening, and uh, I hope you have a great day to, tomorrow to start the week out. Yeah, that's, it is expensive to raise them, but and then when you take a loss, if something would happen to one, it's uh, it's hard to eat right away. But okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, live stream, and uh, we'll talk to you later. And uh, if you have any more comments or anything, leave them down below and uh, we'll talk to you later. Have a great night.